All right, so I want to go over a few things, um, how you can come up. Um, we have an indicator and a strategy coming out to you, the updated uh, version. Um, with the new indicator and strategy, let's go through um, the how you're going to test it, uh, some performance that's done over the last 90 days. Let's go through some things here. All right, so let me get a new chart up. All right, so we have a new indicator strategy. Uh, we're going to get over to Jiro. Jiro, I'm going to get this over to you this weekend. You can start wrapping this. There's going to be two, uh, two uh, indicators. There's going to be one indicator and strategy that emulate each other, and then there's going to be another one coming that is a um, that is a version that we talked about before when the market is weak and strong. Uh, that will come next. Let me get a chart up here first. Let me show you what you're going to be getting in your inboxes here first. Here's just a 12020 Rinko. 12020 Rinko. So let's go to the indicator first. Then I'll go into the strategy. We'll look at some performance. We'll look at the last 90 days and so on, how it's done. We'll go over all this stuff real quick in the next 30 minutes. So let's go down to, well, let's just insert the indicator first. So here's the indicator you're going to be getting. Um, I have the trend set. You can put it as the Unirinko, our standard 165.65. You can change this if you want. Um, I also have the speed period and the speed candles when you want to see wrongly positioned traders coming in the market. I'm just going to put this to zero right now so they don't come up to clutter the chart. Um, you got your standard. Uh, this is the... Uh, indicator the strategy I'll show you in a second uh, we do have an, our ATR ticks this shows you our zones I put our standard in 5438 it's been back tested over 30 years we like that zone 5438 now here's the toggle switches that you're gonna have so you got the first wave you can toggle by itself you got the slingshot you can toggle by itself Momo failure and then you got the trap so I'll go over each one of these a little bit, uh, but you don't have to have all of them on at the same time, but you can. If you want to click them all on, then this alert, and I, I, I like to put the alert at four. This is what we're going to put. Gerald's going to send out to you. Put a four in as the alert. It's a nice loud beep. It's not, a, not an annoying beep, um, but a very, very nice alert to let you know that an arrow fired on one of these setups. Now, if you want the setup uh, to be just a trap, then you would just click the trap, okay? So, um, so this would be the trap if you just wanted the trap trade to come up. If you wanted the trap and the failure to come up, arrow, with an alert, right this alert will come up um, like it does so in the room right now um, I have the crude oil NASDAQ and ES showing so my speakers every time that those arrows fire I get a big loud beep and there if you turn your speakers up I can I have a two-story house you can hear it all the way upstairs when it comes on so you know it's a very loud beep so you can hear when these arrows come up um, so uh, depending on what setup you want to fire, then you would just click the necessary one. We'll just click them all on right now. All right. Um, this is preset. This will be preset for you already. Uh, you can change these values here. So let's just put in some standard values. We use a standard 721 um, on our, oops, on our, Signal lines, um, these will already be put in for you as a preset. Standard 8020 would be the overbought, oversold. So you can change these though, and I'm going to show you under strategy performance, um, you can see what's the best numbers for you um, per market that you trade and per Rinko size or per bar type that you trade. Show you how to do that in a second, but I'll give you the standard place where to start. Uh, 
these are all customizable. You can change these based upon if you run strategy analyzer, which I'll show you in a second how to do uh, with these values, you can change that. So the indicator is very straightforward, though. You can see it's very straightforward. Not a lot to it because everything is built into this already. So if I hit apply, then you're going to get these to come up based upon where the setups came up. So if you look, these will be audible alerts that come on your computer. So this audible alert will come here, will come here, and here. So if I click these off, so just see, let's just see what was coming up. So let's click these off. Just go a slingshot. Let's say we just want a slingshot. You hit apply. And then only slingshot trades would come up on this chart. So that was the only slingshot trade that came up. Um, let me skinny this down a little bit for you. Wait. So that was a slingshot trade that came up recently. We don't have a slingshot here today so far, but so if you just want the alert to fire off on just slingshots, then you would just have the slingshot. If you want a, let's say, first wave, because this is the first wave trade here, right, and a momentum trade. So let's say you want a slingshot and the first wave to show, you would hit apply, and then you would get a first wave um, you would get a, a first wave slingshot. When you click the first wave, let me explain this to you. So this first retracement is not a first wave. It's a first wave slingshot. So when you do first wave trades, it's got to have a slingshot attached to it. The reason being, I don't want shallow retracements. So this is more of a, this is a momentum trade. So if you notice the first wave uh, with the older program, it would come here because it's the first trend change red zone to green zone and that would be our first one well what was happening was was we're getting shallow retracements and getting stopped out on our strategy on these so what i did was i put the first wave attached to a slingshot so it'd be a first wave slingshot you have to trend change right when the first trend change comes it will take the first slingshot first wave trade Right, so if you noticed, the slingshot and the first wave, they came at the same time, right, at this level. Now, if you want momentum in the market, if you want momentum, this is where momentum trade would come in. That's when the oscillators pegged above our extreme levels, and we have momentum in the market. If you're a momentum trader, these are two levels where mo serious momentum came in the market and an alert will be there too. If you wanted to do a, let's say, trap trade, let's say we wanted to do a trap trade, then it'd be very simple. You would take this off and do a trap. That's when a failure comes in. You would apply trap. Traps don't come up very often. When they come up, they're really neat because it's where liquidity grab is happening in the market. This is where a trap trade came in. And that's typically where they grab liquidity. You'll set a lower low or a higher high, grab liquidity, and continue it to the upside. But you can just have trap trades come up uh, also. Now, failures... This is where failure will come up if you just want failures. Then you can have failures that came that come up by themselves also, you know, with the alert system. A failure is a get in zone trend, and you can have those fire off if you want to um, also. Like I said, failures don't come up that often. Also, on the ES, they come up a lot on um, the NASDAQ futures. Now, if you want all of them, then obviously you can just click all of them. 
and then what it will do it will show a an alert will come on your computer when you have all these fire off right so here is a trap trade that came in and you can have all these fire off alerts but like I said you don't have to have all of them fire off if you just want certain trades to come in into the market you know you can have just a trap or if you just want there's your trap trade where the market exploded like I said they don't come up very often when they come up you get a nice little that's a liquidity grab nice little push so you'll see a lot more slingshots come up based upon um, just natural retracements so you can customize how you want to do it uh, this works on all Renko sizes so this is the 120 20 but you can put any Renko size that you want and it's going to find the setup based upon that Renko size so if you want a 125 25 on the Nasdaq futures or 130 or what have you and you specifically like one setup or two setups you know it will find the setup based upon what you're looking for so that's a slingshot let's just say you want to look for failures only then it will look for failures only based upon the chart pattern on that Renko size you use so whatever you put in there like I said on the toggle switch it does have the alarm with it and it will alert you uh, you know when that fires off as far as that goes now a lot of you like the 13 Renko and the S&P um, you do get some nice uh, nice failure trades off the smaller Renko size so it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter what Renko size you use. It's going to find the pattern or find the setup based upon what bar type you use. And you don't have to use, um, you know, we have our custom bar type, the Sim Renko. Um, you can use the Sim Renko. We have our, you can have the Uni Renko. You can use minute charts. You can use basically whatever charts that you want to do. So if you notice, here um, I like I like seeing failure trades off the 13 Renko. So that one yesterday happened at 411 and caught that big surge in the market. So you know you can decide, like I said, on the indicator what you want, and that alert is loud, and it will let you know based upon your speaker. Um, I'm going to have it default to number four alert. That's a big beep uh, for you guys. Um, so you know you're good to go let's get into uh, these different numbers what they mean now and then we'll go into a little performance and then show you some things but the indicator is very straightforward um, you have the alert system with it and you can really dictate what you want to show in the chart and what you what alarm that you want to show on these setups now you can the failure trades preset it's preset right here it's preset already and it's preset for 1a and 2b so what that means is is that 1a uh, and 2b that is your um, overall um, signal lines so these are the signal lines so the first signal line is 1a the second signal line is 2b so if you if you want to see a failure that is above the the large signal line has got to be above 65 and then the smaller signal line has to be above 40 so that will be in the um, I'll show you how to do that in these conference calls but you can change this too so we know that to have a, a failure come up if the signal line 21 has got to be above 65 and then it's got to be above 40 on the smaller signal line if you wanted to change that to get the failure to tweak the failure you can do that these are these are you can change those those are preset though 
So they're preset to find these failure trades when that specifically happens, when the large signal line gets above 65 for buys or the large signal line gets below 40 for sells. Then the smaller signal line has to stay below 65 for sells or above 40 for buys. So you don't have to look for that now. That automatically comes up for you. So you don't need to try to find when a failure is coming in because I know a lot of you like this 13 Renko on the ES and these other markets. It does find the failures quite often on a nice little push. So, and the failures don't come up very often, but when, when they come up, they, they tend to be robust, you know. So when they do come, it's catching you early on in a move. I mean, this is a really nice, a substantial move to the downside and upside, back-to-back -back failures. So like I said, if you wanted to stop trades of just failure with the alert system on your speakers, you could do that. Um, or you can do you know, other ones based upon how you want to do that. But you can see the failures don't come up very often at 13. But when they do, it's you get a nice little uh, possible push in the market. Now, can you run the strategy from this? So let's say that you want to run, let's talk about the strategy now. So that's the indicator. It's pretty straightforward. Talked about that on how you can use whatever you want to, uh, indicator that you want to fire off these are all customizable. If you want to tweak the entries on, let's say, you want your slingshot to come earlier, uh, there's a way to do that by by changing your entry of your D and then also your, your overbought and oversold for your entry. Because right now what it's doing, it's for a slingshot, you have to get above 80 and back down through 20 for a sell or below 20 and a back through 80 for a buy. So you can change that just by putting, let's say you wanted to do above 80 and back through 40 for a sell. You can change it oversold to 40 and then it would go above 80 and back through 40 and what it would do is get you in earlier. Your arrow would come in earlier. I have it preset to get above 80 and get back below 20 or get back above below 20 above 80 so anyway so that's the indicator it has an alert system you can uh, have all the you can have all these on here at once if you want so if you just don't want the failure you want to see them all then you hit apply and then alert will come on and instead of just a failure trade you'll see all the setups that come up here so there was the failure here's your first wave slingshot 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 Slingshot, slingshot, slingshot. Like if you take a slingshot off, it takes a lot of your trades off. Right, so you can, now we just have your first wave and your, and your, your trap trade, I'm sorry. Right, so here's a first wave, first wave, and there's your failure. So you see what I'm saying is that you can you can do whatever combo you want. If, if you like if you like the first waves and the failures the best, well the alert will come right here. And these arrows will only fire that specific that specific uh, indicator with the alert all right but just be aware these are I have made them so you can change these I will have a default you know the failure is pretty straightforward I like this failure when above 65 below 40 that will automatically fire off you know because they're just they're real nice here's a first wave you can see the, the first wave and the failure trades work really well together as you can tell um, a lot of traders will like this combo so let's say you want to do this though. Let's say you want to this week you wanted to trade the strategy with this. And you want the strategy to go short here and the strategy to go long here. And to go long here, right? And you just want to do the first wave and you just want to do only these setups. The, you only want to take failure, you want to short it here, right? 
and you want to go long, short, long it, and long it. Let's say you just want to do that combo because you, you like that combo, the first wave slingshot with the failure. If you wanted to do that and you only want to take these trades, like so this trade this morning, well, it's working on a trade right now, but um, so let's say you just want to take those those trades. I'm going to put all the trades on here right now so you can watch them fire. So let's say you want to take the uh, you want to take the failure trade and the slingshots like this. You can do that through the strategy. So that's the indicator. Let's move to the strategy real quick. The strategy is the same thing as the indicator. So let's get back to the indicator real quick. So you notice the indicator has all these toggle switches where you can dictate which one that you want to show up as an arrow with an audible alert. All right. Right now we're in a trend change. We're looking for shorts. We're looking for short arrows to come up right now, whether it be a trap, a failure, a slingshot, first wave, like, you know, whatever comes first, it will fire live when the bar closes with an alert. All right. So let's say that you want to run a strategy with this. The strategy is set up like the indicator. So I have it set up exactly the same way. So you can put the 165, 65 in here. I'll have this preset for you already. You know, you put your 54, 38. Uh, but then you can, let's say you just want, let's say you just want to take a, um, a failure trade. Right? You just want to take these failure trades like this. So what you would do is, and I'll set that this will be preset for you. You don't have to do this stuff. But you can just have it set to only take failure trades. So I have it set for a failure. I'll put my standard in. This will be preset, like I said, when Gerald sends this out to you. You don't have to punch these in. All right, so if you just want to take a failure trade, then you can't. And the strategy will only fire in where those arrows fire off the indicator. Now I have the, the strategy is set up like the indicator. There's a, a few bells and whistles added. You can change all these that you want. So if you want an earlier entry on slingshots, you can change your, your, your signal lines. Signal line one, signal line two. But you can also... Um, you can also trade during what times you want it to trade. So I'll just put this to 1.30 in the morning. All right, well, I'll let it trade all afternoon. But you can trade during windows, time windows, where it will only trade certain times. Some of you guys only want to trade 9.30 to 11, and then 1 to 3, or whatever. You can put it during time windows. The kill time, what it will do, if you're long or short into news, let's say we have news coming out, like retail sales yesterday, then you can put it at 825, and if you're short or long the market at 825, it's going to get you out of that position. It's going to flatten your position. So I'll just put that to 835. All right, your stop ticks. That's your normal stop. So you put any targets that you want. Target 1, 2, 3, and 4. You don't have to run four targets, so you can come down and you can select entries per direction just to one and only trade one target if you want. Um, you don't have to do all four targets. If you look at uh, the targets, this is just 6, 10, 20 standard. Um, here's your ATR links, you know, that you can change. So when target one is being hit, it will it will stop you out either below the ATR or the stop ticks, whatever hits first. So let's say, let's just say we put our ATRs at 30. What that means is that it's going to stop you out 
if it doesn't hit target one, it's going to stop you out either at 25 ticks or 30 ATR, whichever comes first, which obviously would be 25 ticks. But let's say that you, let's just put some numbers in here. Let's say that you want a runner. You don't want to take a lot of risk in the initial trying to get the first 12 ticks. You can lower that down. And you can stagger these if you want. Meaning as we're trying to get to the first target, if it doesn't, if it gets below the ATR of 20, then it's going to stop you out of all the entire position. So, so this is a 20 Renko, that's why I put it at 20. So it's whatever comes first, stop, the stop or the ticks. Break even is after target two, not target one. A lot of traders get stopped out after target one. So I put target two in there as a break even that will break even. So after you hit 12 ticks, it's still running. You hit 24 ticks, it's breaking even. Go for 36, 1,000. So you can adjust those accordingly. But then what you can do is turn this on. So what it will do, since I only have the failure selected, it's only going to take a failure trade. So what it will do Oops, let me get the So what it'll do, it's only it's only gonna take the failure trade. You see it's not taking the slingshot trades, it's not taking any other trades, it's only gonna take the failure trade. Now, if you want the runner to run it to hold, you can adjust your ATRs accordingly for runners. Last one's a thousand ticks. So you can put it out there to run according to oops that was target one two three you can adjust your ATR accordingly to adjust for runners and for targets so you can lower your risk you know so if you want to go right into the end of the session you can adjust your ATR risk how you want to trail, right? So, but you'll notice that it only takes failure trades. It will only take failure trades. And that's it. But you can adjust, like I said, your ATR. This is a 20 that it hit. You can adjust those to whatever Renko size that you want. But whatever you put, pick in the strategy, so if you notice this, let's, let's just take a look at this. So. The indicator fired, you can have the indicator just fire this off by itself, the failure trade, and it will give you an alert system. Well, you notice that when I put it in the strategy, it, it, tra it took the same trades that the indicator showed. So that's something that you can do. You can have the, the strategy emulate where the arrows are firing off at. And then you can adjust your ATR trails accordingly to how you want to do it. Um, you can use the break even. That's after. Um, that would be after the second target. But you can always tighten these things up too. You can tighten them up to wherever you want on the trail. So you can tighten the trail to wherever you want according to what targets you have set, as far as that goes. All right. So you can see that the indicator matches the strategy. Wherever the indicator is showing an alert, that's where the strategy is going to show an alert also. Okay? So here's the failure trades. So this week, these are the failure trades that have occurred.
It will only take failure trades. This is off the 113.13. So, and you can adjust your ATR, like I said, to trail. If, if you're getting stopped out in your runner is too tight, you can adjust that last one, you know, or the last two if you want. And then if you want to tighten in the beginning of the trade, you can tighten that up also. Let's say you want to tighten it to a tighter stop, you know, you can tighten that also. So in the infancy of the trade, what what it's going to do is it's going to read from the from the entry of the trade here. So you can you can tighten up your initial ATR that's tighter, and then you can loosen this up as much as you want on these setups. So you can see you can tighten the initial move just in case you want to get a smaller stop out, but then you can loosen it up for the run. So it's totally up to you guys how you guys want to do that. But you can see that it will only, like I said, it only pick whatever that you select on the toggle switch. So right here is failure. So let's get this back off, make sure you guys understand this. So I have, I'm going to get only failure on here. So I only, only have failure as an indicator. So there's my failure. There's my failure. 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 All right, so those are the failures. So if I if I come in then and I do strategy and I have only failure selected, it's only going to select the failure trade. It's going to go short here. And go long there okay so very straightforward not hard to understand when you get into it and you start playing with this a little more if you want to tweak these failure entries you can um, I like them straightforward below above 65 for bull below 40 for sell I have that preset already they work very well on catching some moves so um, you guys can do what you want to do as far as that goes, if you select more than one, here's what's going to happen. Let's say you select all these guys. If you select all of them, it's going to get failure trades. It's going to take all the trades right across the board. Here's a momentum trade it took this morning. So if you select it, right? If you're already in a trade, it's going to ignore these slingshots because you're already trailing. However, if it's an opposite side trade, let's say that you're in a slingshot here short. And a failure comes up here. It's going to rotate into the failure trade. It's going to sell this position, cover this position and get right into the slingshot because that's a possible trend change. Other than that, it's going to stay in the trade. So it will stay in the trades. So let's find one here, for example. All right, here, here you go. So you can see we never got stopped out of the ATR. So here's a failure trade. I mean, here's a slingshot trade. The slingshot comes in, hits the three targets. It's the runner's running. But then a failure trade comes up. Failure trade comes up. What's that tell you? It tells you that. There's a possible trend change in the market. 
it will cover your position before hitting the ATR and it will go right in short into the failure trade. All right, so just heads up on that. So very straightforward Renko size you need to do. Okay. What do you mean the audio is going? You guys can't hear me? All right, so you guys can uh, dictate what you want to do as far as that goes. All right, are we all on the same page? Let's get into the strategy analyzer and let's go to our performance. Is everybody on the same page with me so far? Just give me a why. And let's move on to, I know I'm a little bit over my time limit here, so. But everybody good? Very straightforward. It's not hard to understand. The indicator, it has an alert system. You can change those values if you want. The strategy will emulate or mirror the indicator. Okay? So it works on any Rinko size that you want to do. So whatever you guys want to do, this is the 11313. So whatever you want to do, you can you can um, you can put whatever bar type that you want to use that you find that works best. Okay? I'm getting a lot of traders that want market profile in this because you know how my setups work when we break outside of market profile. You know, that's something I can do down the road. I want to get this out to you right now. Um, but, you know, market profile is obviously a very benefit to an indicator like this because failures were great when you first break back inside a market profile like I went over in the room yesterday. And the slingshots were great when you break out of HBA or below LVA the first time. Those first two or three slingshots on the NASDAQ and the ES are very, very robust. We've seen that all last week. We've seen it this week, all this week. So that's something that's going to take me a little bit more time to develop. But what I want to do, I will have a toggle switch on mark, called Market Profile below here. And what the profile will do, it won't take any of these trades unless the profile agrees also. Everybody knows I'm a big fan of profile. It's worked since 1985 on price, 1994 on volume. I'm a big fan of volume profile. Like I said on the microphone yesterday, if we break out of HVA, we're in an imbalanced market and look for slingshots to take over the market and it just trade after trade and they they took off to the upside and i said if we get back inside of hva that's when the failures come in i typed in the room sure enough got back inside hva the failure fired the market tanked so that's something i will be doing um i just leave i need more time to work with it um, putting this all together to making sure it's trading correctly was key to getting this, making sure no bugs were in this and all that stuff. So it took me some time to get all these things functioning correctly. Now things are functioning correctly. We're going to get this out to you. You can use the indicator as a tool. <clears throat> so let's say you want to use the indicator by itself with the alert. If we break out a market profile, I would look for any one of these setups to fire in the trade, especially the trap. Momo slingshot and first wave. I would not look for the failure though. So if we break out a profile, HV and LVA, that's the only one I would look for. If we break back inside a profile, I would look for the failure. Just like I set it up yesterday for you guys and it worked excellent. The arrow fired live for the failure and the market tanked. So um, just like when we broke out HVA, slingshots came in on the NASDAQ futures. We broke out of HVA and below LVA and the market took off. So that's another filter I will be getting down the road for you guys. Just heads up. Uh, and I'll just add it in there as market profile. But right now, uh, you can select specifically these setups to work with what we got. Okay? With, with the specific setups that, that we do in the room. All right? So everything straightforward. Indicator is alert system. The strategy can go off the indicator. Let's move on to... Now, where do we start at? I'm going to give you preset. Everything's going to be preset on the indicator already. All this is going to be preset for you already. All right. So when you use the indicator, 
it's already ready to go. It's ready. It's plug and play. So let me get this off here strategy off real quick. So for you traders that want the alert system, so this is the, like I said, if you just want to fill your trades, there they are. Failure, 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 failure. They'll come up automatically. If you want other trades, they'll come up automatically for you also. But you can see that if you just want those specifically to come up like this, that will come up in the alert system for you. And then you can run the strategy off of this by clicking the same thing, just a failure, and you're good to go. Okay? Now, let's get into strategy analyzer, and let's get into a little performance on this. So, let me take the Momo off. I'm not a big fan of Momo if the market's not outside of profile. Now, I do like Momo if it's outside of profile. But I like these guys. I like the first wave and the failure trades. They work really, really well on these Rinko sizes. This is a 120, a 113.13. Like I said, you can see on the 113, they tend to really catch these nice swings in the market. But anyway. Let's move on to move on to strategy analyzer. So this works well, strategy analyzer, and here's how you want to work this real quick. The strategy analyzer. How you want to do it? Let me get it out of the way. So it's set up the exact same way. You put in, you put in. Now it'll be called different, not J Wave. I just use that because it's when I was programming it. But you can go to the walk forward optimization. Now, I've never tried AI generate. Has anybody tried that yet, the AI generate experimental? I never tried that yet. I'm, I'm going to see if I can. I already blew up one computer last week with some of this stuff. So I may try to blow up another computer and try that one week. But I'll try that. It's, it's a... If you, if you click on it, it says, warning, this use of features CPU intensive and can take considerable time, hours to days to generate strategy results. I never run it yet. Um, feel free to run it if you guys uh, feel a little sparky. So that's a new feature they have where you can run the AI-generated experimental. I just wondered how that the results will come out, but anyway. Uh, the best one to uh, look at is the uh, the walk forward optimization. So when you're doing this, you can put in your standard 165.65 from the top. So just your standard 165.65. Right. These can be standard speed. Um, then I would put in. 54, I just put in the standard to make it easy on yourself when you're testing this stuff, just get, get an idea. Now you can change this to get to optimize results if you want. Now, when you're trying to optimize to find out what specific settings you want to start with for a specific market, let's say you just want to look at failure trades first. They just click that to true. It's very simple. All right. Here is the key to finding the results you want. What I would do is I'd give it a big range. So for the signal line, if you want a big range on these, you can put it to a big range of 1 to 100, the overbought or oversold, 1 to 100. You know, your signal line 2, 1 to 100, or even 1 to 30 if you don't want the a real, if you want to get more trades, 1 to 20. So let's say you just want a lot more trades, you would do, let's say, 1 to 30 instead of 1 to 100. But you get my point. You want a large range to let it find the optimal setting for that specific market um, if you want to... Um, 
let's say you're trading a different market that is different than the S&P or the NASDAQ or what have you, you know, make your range large so then when it spits out the results, you're looking at a large range of data instead of just focusing on a small range of, let's say, 5 to 10 or something like that, right? So, you know, just put it, that's the one thing that I am educating traders to do is give yourself a big range. Now, this is the overbought, oversold. You don't really, you don't need to change these right here unless, you're cha unless you want to change your Momo entry and your failure entry. And you don't want to change, uh, these up here will change your slingshot. So your, your overbought, oversold will change your slingshot entry and the, and the signal line 1, D1, and D2. That's going to change if you're, um, if you want an entry that's not lagging, then you can change that to, to specifically, instead of going above 80 and below 20, you can put it right at 40 if you want. It goes above 80, entry right at 40. It goes above 80, entry right at 60. So you can change that based upon, that's where the overbought, oversold is. <clears throat> okay? When you're changing the bull and bear, this specifically is for the failure because overbought two is specifically signal line two. So we know on my failure trades that come up, it's got to be above 65 for signal line two, and signal line one has to be above 40. Right? So on signal line, if for sales, it's got to be below 40, the signal line two, and the signal line one, the bear's got to be below 65. So you can change those if you want, if you want to adjust your, your failure trades. So let's say that the uh, failure trade, you're saying, hey, I want an extreme failure. I want it to be above 80 instead of 65, my large signal line. And I want my small signal line to be above let's say right here, you know, instead of above uh, 40, I want to be above 65, make it really strong. You can do that or you can have the analyzer analyze and just do this. You can put 20 to 80 or 20 to 90 and I'll find the best settings for your failure trade or your, or your Momo trades. You know, because your Momo trades and your failure trades are specifically these values right here. We all know that my signal lines are 40 and 65. If you specifically want to change your failure trades and your Momo trades, these are the values you want to change. If you specifically want to change your slingshot entries to not lag, like in the room, I have it going above 80 for sells and below 20 and below 20 for the entry. For buys, I got it going below 20 and above 80 for entries, right? That's when the arrow fires in the room, right now live in the room that you see and crude and everything else. If you specifically want to change the slingshot, then you'll want to change the D and you'll want to change the overbought oversold. All right. If you specifically want to change the Momo trades and the failure trades, it's these values down here, 1A, 1B. Just think of it like this. 1A is signal line 7. 2B is signal line 21. This is the large. So the small signal line is 1A. The large signal line is 2B. We know in the room I have two signal lines in the bottom of the chart. I have a 21 is a large signal line and 7 is my small signal line. Right? So for failure trades, the 2B is very important. I have to get below. For bull, I have to get above 65, right? I got to get above 65 on signal line 2, and signal line 1 has to stay above 40 for bulls. For sells, I got to get below 40 and stay below uh, 65. So here's your time. You can put your time... Let's say you specifically want to, now here's what I like to do. I like to widen my time out, let's say to 130 to 1600, or if you only trade in the morning and you just want to see an optimization from 730 in the morning to 11 o'clock. 
you can do that. You can put all these at 7.30 to 11, and it will only optimize it will only optimize that time to find the best setups, whether it be a failure or whatever you select, you can do that. Right? A kill time all the kill time is stating is that if you're long or short in a news, right, you typically news comes out at 830 Eastern. So if you put 825, it just means it's going to flatten that position into the news event you know and then you can resume re resume at a certain time they'll start looking for trades again all right the stop stop ticks let's say you're not familiar I'm not knowing what stop to use on a 20 Rinko I always go five to eight ticks less than the Rinko size because and the ATR the same way because Typically, you don't need that large of stop. So what I'll do on optimization, let's say I have a 20 Renko, I'll start at 15. If it's a 20 Renko, I'll go to 35. I'll find that range of where the, the best stop is. Target's the same way, depending if you're a scalper or if you're a position trader. The break-even is always after target two. Just realize that. Um, you can put those values into however you want to do it. Um, your ATR here. This is a really cool way how you do when you do the performance, um, your trail. So if I have a 20 Renko, I, I can't have a trail of less, uh, really small, like down to five. You know, so you can't have a trail, let's say, to 15, though. So if it's 20, uh, 20 Renko, I'd like to see when the trail start at 15, and I'll go to Y to 63. And I'll do that for all of them just to see from where my targets are, if I change my targets to this, and see what the optimal ATR is, and so on. Break even, if you want to try it without break even, just turn that off, right? So once you do that, it's going to spit out per market the optimal, what, what the optimal um, values for you, okay? I got everything preset for you already that comes out to you. For a starting point, but that's I'm just showing you how you can use this. This work this works really well with um, with the strategy analyzer. For the instrument, you would select ES. Um, then you got to select a specific Rinko. So let's say you're doing the Rinko bar, and you want to do the 120. Just make sure you put that in. And then the start date. Um, some of you guys want 90 days back. You know, you can go all the 90 degrees back. Right there. Uh, I always like to do, now there's two ways you can do it. If you want just volume sessions, 930 to 1600, I like doing this U.S. Equities RTH. I like that. It's real time. That's when the New York opens up and New York closes. I like doing this in, uh, to, to, with the strategy to test during this time. I think it works very, very, very well. Um, if you want 24 hours a day, the reason I don't do 24-7, I'm not up 24-7. I just turned my strategies on this morning at 6. I turned my strategies on at 6.30 in the morning. I had four trades yesterday um, on it because I use a little longer Rinko sizes. But I turned mine on at 6.30 and I let them run to 1,600, 4 o'clock. So that's how I like to do it. If you don't, I, I was doing 130, and I was letting it run at night, which um, I've been disconnected a couple times with Ninja Trader, and it ended up losing me uh, money on the position because Ninja Trader was disconnected, and it will not hold your stop for you. So be aware of that. Just don't turn this on and go walk the dog. Okay, so you know if you're gonna let this strategy run for you then you should be sitting there and, uh, you know, I have it turned on. My speaker is really high. If I step out of the office, then it's going to let me know I got disconnected. You know, it, it's you can hear it disconnect. Or if I hear a trade go off, I can hear running a trade. So my point is, is it, you know, just don't think you can 
walk away from strategies that are running in case the, your ninja goes down, what have you. If your ninja does go down, um, if you're running a strategy, uh, I educate traders to have your number and your account number ready on your uh, on your cell phone, and that we call up, give me your account number, and just say flatten the position. You know, um, and they'll flatten the position uh, at the trade desk if that happens, and it it will happen. And you know, if you're if if you're not if you do a lot of strategy trading, it it will happen. So. You know, just be aware that I would have that ready with your account number so you're not fumbling around trying to find your account if you're long or short a position. Because like I said, if a ninja trader does go down, you don't want to be, you know, leaving an open position if news comes out or anything. You never know. So, uh, but anyway, so that's um, RTH is really good to use. That's a real time. You'll get some neat results if you use RTH versus just 24-7. I like RTH because that's where the volume is, uh, the New York Open. You know, 930, get a lot of volume, especially if you trade the NASDAQ, the ES, the, the Dow, the Russell 2000. This tends to work really good. And it works really good on testing, too, as far as that goes. Uh, this is key, though. When you're doing this, um, I like max profit factor when I'm doing this. Uh, but this is key. Go to genetic. Okay, when you're doing the optimizer, are you going to be there for quite a while? Remember, this is just a good starting point for you. You know, to let you know, uh, let let the computer help you out and, and give you values on different markets where you want to start. I, I have these preset, like I said, already for you. So once you click run, it'll run through the days that you want, and it'll give you options on how you want to do it. You can tweak as far as that goes. So that's just a uh, uh, go to tools. I'm sorry, go to uh, New, and then go down to Strategy Analyzer, and you guys can put that in there. Um, and like I said, start with uh, the walk forward. Hit Run, you guys are good to go. All right? So, one second here. So right now, if we look at what's going on with the trades here this morning, um, I got the first wave selected, slingshot, failure, and trap. So, so far this morning, we're waiting for a setup to occur. If you're trading the 113 Renko, we almost had a failure that happened there. Obviously, didn't qualify um, because I had the failures clicked on. You can see they will come up against trend. So, that did not come up. Now, let's go to, um, to performance. So, when we go into this, let me get real real quick. Here is something that I found. I went back not, this 90 days. So let me show you something when, 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 you, when you're doing this as far as if, if, if you're strategy testing and you're trying to find something that, that works well for you, this is key. All right, I, I want you to look at a couple things. And this is how I find something that I want to test going forward or even possible trade my money's with, right? I want to look at the reward to risk. So this is a misconception about strategy trading. And this is something I'm going to wrap up with, and we're going to get more into depth on things going forward here next Friday because I'm already an hour into this thing. Gerald's going to kill me. But let me wrap this thing up. I want you to notice, this is 30 days back, using the strategy, I want you to notice the percent profitable. And what I did is I clicked on every single setup, every single one. The, the failure trade, the trap trade, I, I combined them all, every single one. And what I did is I just put specific generic targets, generic targets in. You know, I did the standard 6, 10, 20, 30, just everything generic. What I want to show you is this, though is I put my stop at a small at a small stop and I put the ATR lop. So I had a I had a 12 tick stop on this with a 30 ATR and I had one con with one contract, one contract and I was doing um, a thousand tick target. 
what I want to show you is the largest winning trade versus the largest losing trade. And this is where you know you're in the right direction right away. If you're upside down, right, if this number is upside down and your largest losing trade is more than your largest winning trade, you're not, you, you, you are not using, the, those settings are not conducive to a winning trading plan, all right? This is almost an eight to one reward to risk. If you can find yourself a three to one reward to risk, you're still doing good. But if you can find yourself an eight to one going 90 days back or six to one or five to one or four to one, depending on what market you use, that's what we want to do. The one thing I want you to take from this is this. I want you to look at the consecutive winners versus consecutive losers. Look at the losers. They were over, they over, uh, they superseded the winners, 8 to 11. But I want you to look at the percent profitable too. You're only looking at 48, 50%. And this is a misconception about traders who have not ever strategy traded before. If I got a 95% rate profitability or 98% profitability, but my reward to risk is upside down, meaning I have a $100 average winner but a $700 average loser, then that strategy should not be traded because you're upside down. Another is a profit factor. There's a couple I'm running right now that I'm running with a five to six profit factor right now. So I like the profit factor to at least be a two to one ratio. But I like when they're three, four, five, six. Sometimes you see higher the trap trade. Sometimes on different Rico sizes, you'll see it even higher than that. So what I look for is this. I don't look for, and you don't look at the net profit and the gross profit. You know, past results are not indicative of future results. And you have to remember that. Past results are not indicative of future results. So. Do I like to look at this? Yes, but is this the most important thing to me? No. This is the most important thing to me is reward to risk. I want to see what my average winning trade is versus my average losing trade. And if I'm four or five to one, this is almost five to one. This is what, four and a half to one? That's a good reward to risk. You know, am I at uh, my largest winning versus largest losing? Good reward to risk. So when you're going through this, don't get caught up. What I'm finding is the more I'm running these strategies, I don't get caught up in percent profitable. I get caught up in drawdown. I want to see what max drawdown is. That's key because I don't care if this thing said $100,000 net profit, but my drawdown was $20,000 you're not going to be able to sustain drawdowns. So as you're trading through these strategies and it's taking, I don't mind four losers in a row if the next is a big winner and I'm net up because I don't care about the percent profit, so, you know, how percent profitable is. I care about the net result obviously here, but I care about the reward to risk. Because if you can sustain drawdowns, right, that is key. So that's one thing that you guys have to understand that you are going to go forward. Now, what I'm going to have, uh, Larry and, and, and all you guys, um, you're talking about doing the, what, ESNQ, show settings that made you most profitable so far. Thank you very much. Yeah, so there's so many different bar types you can use. This was off of a, a bar. This is actually off of our Sim Rinko, our proprietary bar type. But you can run any one that you want, Larry, and spit out the results when you get this. And you'll see. The key is this. Not specific. One bar type is not the most optimal bar type to use per se. You know, I've only tested the S&P on this. So that's the market that I've tested. 
So what you can do if you want the NASDAQ futures, then you can test the NASDAQ futures. I specifically stuck to one market because when we did the back test on the S&P um, for our zones, it was specifically the last 30 years for our zones. That's how we came up with our 54, 38 zones was the S&P. So this is specific, but I'm telling you when you run the different bar types and what I'm going to do for you guys is um, I know Larry and a few other ones, they wanted, where do I start from? I'm, I'm giving you starting settings to start out with for the S&P. Now, whether you want to trade the NASDAQ or you want to trade the Dow or what have you, you can do that. So everything's going to be preset for you guys already. But I, there's not one bar type that says, hey, this is the best bar type you have to use, the 120 with these settings. It's not that way because there may be better performance. There may be better. This, this performance may not be the best out there. You know, this is just me not even putting in specific uh, optimized targets and optimized ATRs. That's just showing you what you want to look for. You want to look for the high reward to risk trades. You want your reward to be higher than your risk. So let's say you plug a, let's say, Larry, you like a 13 Renko and you want to do failure trades. Well, if you plug a 13 Renko in and this reward to risk is high like this, then you're, you're in the right spot. But if you plug it in and during the time period that you want to trade, or if you plug in a, a different Renko size or different bar type, use an outside bar type that we don't even use or what have you, or, or if you use ours or what have, is it, if you don't get a good reward to risk, then you should not use those settings on that specific market. So that's the one thing that I that you need to take from this, right? So let's say here, right now, on this trade setup right here, this arrow just fired here with an audible alert, right? This has to be a slingshot. See, there's slingshot our first wave. So let me take the failure trade off. It's one of these two. Yeah, so this is the first wave short. So, so the arrow fired off here on the on the S and P, and this is a one thirteen thirteen. So, if you wanted to say, hey, I want to trade, I want to see what the slingshots do off the one thirteen thirteen, or I want to see what the you know the the Momo trades and the failure trap trades. You can you can do that also. You can do that by using your strategy analyzer to find out the specific ATR that you want to use with the specific 13 Renko because your 13 Renko settings are not going to be the same as your 120 20 Renko settings. Now this is a nice trade setup right now. And some of you may want to scalp this versus position trade it. So there's no specific settings that are the best settings for each trader. Each trader will be different. Some traders will want to scalp this. Here's your live fill on a strategy. Your live fill will be low this bar. Some of you want to scalp that. Some of you want to position trade it, right? The fill was at 47.74. It's as low as 70 right now. It's up 16 ticks and still going down. So to say that the best setting for you to use is four ticks, you can't say that because some of you may want a runner on this. You know, but it it's still the strategy stays the same. It specifically stays the same. It stays the same because what it does, it 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 tells you that this short that's going on right now with the audible alert. that fired off on your indicator right there on the first wave, that's a qualified setup because you know it's a first wave because you have the toggle switch on with the alert. If you strategy trade it, so if you strategy traded this, it would go short right there when the strategy came up. 
So you see what I'm saying is that wherever you want to optimize, whatever specific market you want to optimize, wherever the indicator fires an arrow, that's where the strategy, strategy is going to fire the arrow. But the one thing that you have to understand when you're doing this, and this is what when we get this out to you, you'll see, is that this can work on all bar types. This can work on all scalping, position trading, whatever the trader's risk tolerance is. So you can, so to say, hey, this is, a, this is the best bar type and the best setting to trade. Maybe it's not because there's so many different variables out there that you can put in. You need to find what's best for you. Some of you won't want to trade a larger Renko. This is a 113, right? It's a smaller Renko. So your risk is a lot smaller. If you trade a 125 Renko, your risk is going to be higher. And you have to be aware of that. You know, will you get more profitable trades off of, or will you, can you position trade off of larger Renko size that, that, could, hold on one sec, guys. One second, one second. One sec, guys. I'm in a position here, guys. One sec. Order filled. All right. 585 off the open. Not bad. So, you know, what you can do, listen, you can, what I'm saying is this. You can do the Rico size that you're comfortable doing. What we're not going to do, and I told Gerald this already, I'm not going to say this is the best thing for you right here. No. My risk is a lot different than your risk. You know, I just traded the New York Open right when it opened up. I, have a, I, I like trading this strategy right at the New York Open. You know, right, I use the RTH with this specific strategy right here, and I just traded it just now, and it was with live monies. I like it right when it opens in the New York. That's, that's my risk tolerance. That's what I like to do. I like when the New York, right when it opens up, I'll get long or short with a strategy like this. But to some, maybe they won't like that. So you have to decide what's good for you. Are failure trades more to your liking because they don't come up very often and they have a higher reward to risk? Maybe. You know, that's totally up to you as a trader, and we leave that in your hands. What I will show you how to do is I'm going to show you how to optimize this. I'm going to show you how to settings to start out. The failure trades are already preset already. You know, I don't I don't mess with the failure trades, you know, already. Um, you know, you don't have to mess with those if you don't want to. The trap trades, they're pretty much preset. You can still play with them to tweak them. But this, like I said, works on all bar types. It works, you, whatever bar type that you can think of, you can plug and play this. Like I just put this, I don't know if you older members rem know this, um, remember this. I did the 9 Sim Rinko. Remember the 9 Sim Rinko? And the strategy works really, really well on the 9 Sim Rinko. You know, and the, five, and the 8 Sim Rinko and the 5 Sim Rinko are old bar type. So... You know, you guys can, just like this right here, if you trade off the 13 Renko, that's a nice little setup right here. That happened this morning right at the New York Open. You know, I ended up taking this short myself here this morning. 